Okay. We were just talking to Rico on the InfoWars.com behind-the-scenes streams. You go to InfoWars.com. Those specific exclusive streams have the behind-the-scenes. Um, we are talking to Rico in Toronto. He brought up how the big foundations fund La Raza, Mecha, the radical black separatist groups, all of this to get us all fighting with each other. And so then they can radicalize peaceful groups so those groups never get true equality or freedom or economic mobility. They get neutralized, bitter, uh, and filled with hate. More balkanization. West, uh, Webster Tarpley. This is an absolutely critical theme, and, and you're absolutely right. If, if you look, first of all, at Obama... He is more than anything else a product of the foundations. His mother was an operative for the Ford Foundation. Obama has worked for the Gamaliel Foundation, the Joyce Foundation, gun control, the Woods Fund, the Annenberg Foundation, playing uh, black parents against the black uh, teachers union. His friend Bernardine Dorn gets huge money from the MacArthur Foundation. My research for my next book, which is Barack H. Obama, the unauthorized biography, reveals that the, the Weathermen were actually founded with a Ford Foundation grant. Certainly Floyd McKissick, Stokely Carmichael, the, the worst firebrands, Rap Brown, these characters, the, the people who opposed Martin Luther King with their incendiary rhetoric, all foundation-funded. And as you correctly point out, the worst provocateurs of the Hispanic community, the people who talk this insanity about you know carving up the United States, they're also foundation-funded. Obama has friends like Khalidi... And, uh, and a bunch of others. This is the foundation funded, uh, pro U.S. wing of the PLO. Among the Native Americans, you got a guy like, uh, Ward Churchill, who is essentially in the same, the same corner. The pervasive, uh, activity of these foundations is one of the things that's destroying American society. Obama is somebody who says he was a community organizer for the Gamaliel Foundation. What he's really saying is, I was a poverty pimp for the foundation world where the Ford Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation dominate. This is one of the principal things about Obama. This is what he comes from, his world, that stuff about the bitter clingers, the people who cling to religion and guns, and anti-trade. That is the foundation trilateral point of view. You cannot have a president who hates the American people. In the case of Obama, he does hate the American people, and therefore he's going to attack this austerity program, with great gusto, unlike Carter, who probably had some Christian scruples about it, Obama will have nothing of the sort, because he's been worshiping in a Ford Foundation church, that Reverend Jeremiah Wright, with uh, Dwight Hopkins is an operative of the Ford Foundation, Reverend Otis Moss got through college with the Ford Foundation, this whole James Cone black liberation theology is again the Ford Foundation uh, Union Theological Seminary School of this stuff, and it is designed to perpetuate racial conflict. Absolutely, and uh, they fund all these groups. They do it to get everybody at each other's throats, and then, and, then the, and, and, and then the racial tension becomes real, and then it's a dynamo uh, which 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 just builds up force and strength. Anything else, Rico? Uh, yeah, my second point, something yet yet brought up a couple weeks ago when you were talking about the the. The anthrax letter that the Bush enemy received. Yes, I, I, I remember reading quickly just uh, um, the, the the Roman the Roman Empire, and it was the same thing. It was the same thing. Cicero, a little bit before Caesar came into power, Cicero was saying how the enemies of Rome need to be um, dealt with. I've received letters. I have letters that say that a couple senators are going to be mass assassinated. So we need to clamp down. It's this is. This worked a thousand years ago. It works again. It's the same thing. Like nothing's changed. Well, that's what's incredible. I appreciate your call. Yeah, I uh, bought a high school textbook. What was it Barnes and Noble? It's like I think it's three thousand years of revolution, and it's pretty accurate actually. But you just look at every country and just the thousands of revolutions and all the subterfuge and backstabbing and Machiavellian activity and elites and cloak and dagger and then somehow they taught the american people the last hundred years that none of that exists everything's fine go back to sleep and and, and if we say anything on this show it's just start looking around you and realizing that when these elites get out of control and these warlords and these banker warlords start fighting with each other the oligarchy as webster calls them uh, when these moneyed, uh, you know, noble interests uh, start battling with each other we don't matter in the equation we get hurt real bad 
And uh, this is just a game of chess for them. I mean, people say, well, why do they want more power? They're already so rich. Well, anybody who knows rich people knows they want even more. They want power. They want control. And to deny that there are people that want power and control is to deny history. Webster, I want to go calls quickly, but how did we get to the point, do you think, of the average person? They're now coming out of this delusion and this and this, this, this mesmerized uh, smokescreen. But, but people to say, oh, there's no subterfuge. There's no corruption. There's no influence. There's no behind the scenes. You're a crazy, dangerous conspiracy theorist. How were they able to inculcate that in people's minds? Well, it's a long process of degradation. I think that the, the central question is probably the deindustrialization of the United States, in, initiated by Volcker under trilateral Carter and Brzezinski auspices, and then continued with the union busting of the uh, of the Reagan years, the the systematic decline in the standard of living. So it's about minus two thirds of what it had been. Uh, around 1966, or and so people are having to 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 work twice as hard just to keep the illusion going, and so they physically are just disconnected, saying, "I don't care." There's also the, that more recently, Obama could not have broken through if the Democratic Party had not been in chaos, and part of that is Pelosi. Uh, Pelosi came in with the mandate of stopping the Iraq War, and she brought the and instead she's the, ruled with an iron fist, saying no. And what we then had is, as soon as that was in power, then Al Gore comes out of the woodwork with his demagogic, fake, global warming campaign to break the the uh, the momentum against Bush and against the, the Iraq war. And then by the end of that year, you've got Obama deployed into a chaotic Democratic party. Let me stop you, because I want to go to Elliot, Jeff, okay. Cliff, and others, and, and a, a DJ. But before we do that, I wanted to the last hour get into the eugenics angle, which you're a real expert on, Webster. I mean, I know my stuff on this. I wrote over 20 books on the subject and studied it, and you know even more in some cases than I do. In a nutshell, why do they want to reduce our numbers? Why do they want to enslave us? Why do they want to bring feudalism back in? Is this just the instincts of the Anglo-American feudal lords? Uh, and, I mean, break that down, what the fake modern environmentalism is. Well, the, to, one is the, the population side. The, the, the oligarchy always argues that there are two main problems in the world. One is overpopulation. The other is industrial pollution in some form. Uh, to be an oligarch means that you've got to hate the majority of humanity by thinking that you're better off than they were. You can go back to the works of Hesiod in, in ancient Greece, pretty much the beginning of the you know sort of archaic Greek literature. Plato says, as well. The reason for the Trojan War was that there were too many people. Too many people were oppressing the breast of Mother Earth, and therefore we had to have the Trojan War to kill off uh, a lot of them. In terms of the global warming, uh, I don't need a climatologist to say that this is a fraud. As a historian, I can look back to the medieval warm period, 1100, 1200, when you have uh, grapes growing in England, grapes growing in... What in about England. Hiberium Maxim 8,000 years ago, which brought us into the Bronze Age and the, and the first uh, city-states? I mean, it was 10 degrees hotter on average then. They have the ice cores. There's no doubting it. We, we, are, we are well within the, the band of fluctuation of historical uh, memory. The other one, of course, is we have a little, a little ice age around 1600 to 1625, which corresponds to the Spurrer minimum and the Maunder minimum in the sunspot cycle, it is basically determined by solar activity. That's at least the major input, not by human activity at all. And in that little ice age, you had the ports of northern Europe, the ports of Germany and, and the Netherlands were Frozen. blocked with ice, icebergs. So uh, the, the, the idea of being a climatologist means you're a charlatan and a fraud, because it's a discipline. It's not meteorology. It's not oceanography. It's not any science. It's not history. It's a fake science invented by Al Gore, and all during the Clinton years, if you didn't agree with Al Gore, you would be fired. You now, come on, let's give, I mean, he claims he invented the Internet, too. He certainly is the, <laughs> is the pimp pusher of it, but the Club of Rome in the early 60s said they would use right. threat of a fake ice age or global warming to bring in global yes. taxes. And remember, Aurelio Pache, the co-founder, was an old fascist, and the other one was Alexander King, who once admitted that the purpose of this was genocide in the third world. He said, you know, the reason we, we preach this, after all, is to block development of the third world. That is still the same. And in that's words, in the British Commission on Population 44 to 49, which was rolled into State Department Memorandum 200. Yes, and, and beyond the 200, remember that this was all institutionalized under Carter, under Muskie, as Global 2000 and Global Futures, under Brzezinski, Trilateral, Rockefeller, auspices. So you basically got... 
Kissinger is a puppet of Nelson Rockefeller, Brzezinski is a puppet of David Rockefeller, and that's pretty much the way the thing is run. 